Yo ho, yo ho, here we are again at the Compendium of Discomfort. I'm still Michael and we're still talking about baby assassins. Like I said on Friday, they will release um, that one, uh, New Days, and that means that I want to revisit the first two. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. I already talked about the first one in a different video and you can watch that and a lot of stuff that I mentioned there will be relevant for this one as well. So uh, I recommend to watch it and more watching of my videos is good for me and I like that. So uh, yeah, feel free to watch that. And um, yeah, another thing that I mentioned like in the first video, I said that there will be a new release of the Blu-ray and um, I will get that. But I have the Blu-ray of the second one over there. And I checked a little bit the bonus material. There's a lot. There's a lot of like cut scene, the making of and stuff. And it all looks great. There's an audio commentary. And um, I felt like, yeah, maybe... I don't want to do that today and maybe we'll just put it together with uh, the audio commentary of the first one that I will get soonish. Um, I just felt like if I don't do this video today I will do it maybe at the weekend and then it's already pretty late and I want to get done with it first. So uh, yeah, I will uh, spend my time talking to you instead of watching that stuff and I will watch that later and if it's worth talking about it again I will do that and then we will just put one and two together and yeah but maybe we will just skip it like the audio commentary seem to be a lot of just like the director and the two main actresses uh, just hanging out and talking about stuff what's happening and some noticing some details that um, maybe some people missed what I saw like the, in, the, in the first scene in the car one of the guys touches the amulet, but it's not that relevant. So maybe it's just uh, nice to have and nice to um, enjoy the movie with a little bit different hangout feeling. But yeah, we will find out eventually. But I thought that's um, not for today. Today we'll just talk about the movie and my impressions and a little bit about uh, this thing here the a movie pamphlet which I read and uh, this wasn't as interesting as the one for the first one so not even here is as much to talk about so I guess overall this will be a little bit shorter and I hope the first one was pretty long and we don't need one hour videos every time because uh, upload took forever and I don't like uploads that take forever so um, yeah let's see how we can get this done and I dressed a little bit more appropriate I feel like I don't have a cat t-shirt but I have a fishing bear and I have this uh, nice Hawaiian shirt I felt like that would uh, go well with the two brothers who are basically the heroes of this movie what's wrong here um, we will get to that in a second let's just check the cast and um, the crew it's basically the same we've got Yugo Sakamoto as the director we have Kensuke Sonomura as the action director and we've got uh, Akari Takaishi and Saori Izawa as the uh, lead actresses yeah Akari Takaishi and of course, Saori Izawa. And uh, yeah, the same as usual. Then we have uh, Atomu uh, Mizuishi um, in a recurring role, like every part of the series he's in there, and some others that we talked about in the last video. So, who is new? That's Joey Iwanaga, who is uh, one of the main uh, villains or heroes depending on your perspective who seemingly got the job because the big question was like after this big big battle in the first one where the main villain was uh, here uh, Masanori Mimoto who is seemingly one of the greatest action performers in Japan so who would you get? And uh, the director, remember Joey Iwanaga, who uh, has worked with Saudi Izawa before on uh, Rudoni Kenshin, the final 
and basically um yeah what impressed uh sakamoto was that he did a movie with donnie yen that must have been enter the fat dragon um directed by kenji tanigaki which i haven't seen yet but uh, mr tanigaki seems to be a pretty brilliant di director and uh yeah, now I want to watch this movie, so I guess I have to do that. Um, anyway, he has been in some other nice stuff like a Tokyo Tribe or Blood of Wolves, um, Crows Explode and more, more, more. So a lot of action stuff. Uh, here some high and low movies. Um, good, good boy. And then with Tatsuomi Hamada, who uh, has worked with the other big action Sakamoto, namely uh, Kenichi Sakamoto, on some Ultraman movies, and he was in Mob Psycho, and some other stuff. Um, yep, good boy as well. Then we have uh, Tomo Naka. I've talked about her quite a lot recently, because she appeared in a lot of stuff. For example, Baby Assassin's uh, Nice Day and Every Day. Um, yeah, so she's... Uh, she started her, her baby assassin's career in this movie as an assistant to Mr. Atomu, uh, so the corpse disposal dude. And um, yeah, she's pretty great here and keeps being great in the sequels, I guess. Nice days, I don't know, but in the TV show she's pretty wonderful and here she's wonderful uh, uh, as well. So, good. So with Junpei Hashino, who's basically the boss of the two, uh, guys, and he hasn't been in that many movies, but most of the movies uh, that he has been are pretty, uh, has been in, are pretty great. Uh, small, slow, but steady. Shell and Joint, um, Town of Head Counts, uh, Almost People, and uh, what was it? Ninja Girl. And if you don't know these movies, why watch them? They're amazing. And uh, yeah, so good. Very nice. And we have Otto Abe, who hasn't done that much yet, but um, she was in a movie called Rolling Marbles by um, Kenichi Ugana with, um, I think Yumi Kawai was in there as well, if I'm not wrong. Yes, she was, and uh, that makes it already interesting, good to pair. But she had a relatively big role in the recently finished Kamen Rider Gotchard, which I enjoyed a lot, and uh, yeah, a little bit surprising that I enjoyed it that much, because at first it looked a little bit too silly and too, like, childish. Uh, but no, it's actually a lot of fun, and I highly recommend watching Kamen Rider. Gotchard, but the new one. I haven't watched the last two episodes yet. I was too busy, but the first two were wonderful, and uh, I hope it keeps being wonderful. Then we have a veteran actor Tetsu Watanabe. Um, probably you heard his voice in uh, Princess Mononoke, but he was in movies like Silence or Shin Gojira or uh, Kurosawa's Träume, Träume, uh, German title, uh, Dreams, uh, Hanabi Sonatine, a lot of movies. Um, he did a lot with uh, Sono and Mike and so on. So you have probably seen him and it's pretty funny. He's usually playing a little bit scary characters and here he's this um fun little old man and he got this role because he appeared in a janitor too and there he had a nice little chat with sakamoto about um crash landing on you so sakamoto felt like oh he can be a friendly old man who talks about pop culture uh, so let's give him this role as a pretty Funny, yeah, and that's basically the new cast. Uh, we have Atarashi Gakko no Ridas. Uh, I think now, at least in the West, they're more famous as Atarashi Gakko. Um, yeah, they have a cameo, but not so important as a role, but uh, very fun and entertaining. So that's the cast and the crew and everything important said. Uh, so what is this movie about? So in the first one, we learned we've got these two professional killers who are not so good at living in general and that keeps on going here but there are two other killers uh, two boys two brothers who are even worse off at living because not that they're even crazier and um, more incompetent now they're 
quite decent boys, but they they're just part timers in the killing business, not full time workers, and they want to step up and improve their life significantly. And their boss or the guy who's responsible for them um, tells them if they kill these two girls, there might be an open uh, slot and they might go up the ranks and become professionals. And uh, that's quite a heartwarming story. What's going on here? And the, the problems for me last time started. Like last time I felt that the story is so focused on these two boys who basically start the movie. They're the underdogs. They experience the uh, hero's journey while our two main characters uh, have tiny minimal um, development in their character. So by normal movie standards, the enemy should be the um, protagonist. And that's very confusing. And at the end, how, how this ends, um, I didn't like it. It really, really made me angry last time. And this time I felt like, oh, I'm wrong. It actually makes a lot of sense what's going on here. And um, I'm still heartbroken. But being heartbroken is maybe the uh, right way to feel about this. So that's very nice. But let's talk a little bit more spoiler free before we get to the big deep stuff. Um, last time I talked a little bit about the interviews from the pamphlet. Let's do that maybe again before we really start. So, um, Mr. Sakamoto, little Yugo, said that here he didn't want to focus so much on this um, social misfit thing and he wanted to focus on comedy. And I think for this approach, there's still a lot of social commentary and criticism. And that's really funny for me somehow. I don't know. Uh, really, really weird. Um, so he, uh, he explains this appearance of the two uh, villains uh, first. Like, we spent like almost 10 minutes with them. And he said that's basically like a One Piece movie where first the villains get introduced and we don't need to see the heroes so early because, like uh, Luffy in uh, One Piece, these two are strong enough of characters that we can wait for them to appear and it just builds up anticipation until they finally show up and uh, do their thing. So, yeah, uh, one piece. <laughs> and, um, yeah, here uh, the two brothers. Like I said, one of them was hired because of his action background and the other one did some action before so he can do that stuff but basically the idea was he's pretty tall like 180 centimeters and relatively strong so he looks like someone who could be a killer but he has a cute face and then he got this cute outfit with the cat on the t-shirt and uh, he was told like uh, i think um, like in japanese they sometimes ignore the subject so i'm not 100% sure, but I, I think the idea is that his character used to have a cat and the cat died. And now um, he believes that the cat lives on in his cat t-shirt. So he feeds it with little cat food and then he eats the cat food. Um, pretty cute. And yeah, basically uh, here these two act a little bit like a manzai duo. And... One thing about um, Mr. Tasaka, played by Atomo, so the uh, dead body dispersal, uh, dead body, I forgot the word, how do I call this guy? The guy who gets rid of dead people. Um, like, he has a little bit unpleasant meeting with these two brothers, and he said that's uh, one way to show how serious it gets when you fight the corporation. And we will get to that later. I think that's a very, um, very important thing here. 
Oh yeah, and uh, in this movie we get a reference for the movie. Uh, we made a beautiful bouquet. Um, and he said, well, Sakamoto said, it's, he likes the movie. In the in this movie it looks a little bit like the, it's not a good movie because the characters don't really get it. But he said it's basically a similar movie as Baby Assassins in the way that, uh, or in the sense that, Many people watch these movies and some feel like moved emotionally and others are just sitting there and wonder like what's going on with these characters? Why do they do this stuff? What's happening here? Like we made a beautiful bouquet. It's basically a story about a couple that gets together and enjoys being a couple and after a while the guy gets so sucked up in the work life and uh, yeah, being a proper member of society that basically the relationship um, ends because of that. And that's not even a spoiler. But uh, yeah, so that's a relevant thing here. And similar to that, yeah, people say, oh, oh, what's going on here? Some can identify with what's going on. Some people are just confused by the characters in the movie and yeah one one of the um important points that he sees about the character development is that uh, Chisato uh, betrays Mahido a couple of times uh, but she still um wants her to believe in her and uh, wants to save her and things like that and that's very nice so um Akari Takaishi said here too that the main point about the characters was that their uh, relationship is getting a little bit deepened and even like at the start of the movie their relationship is very different from the first one they get along much better and they have a much better relationship which uh, was more like a goal in the first one so that's very nice and she said she uh, improvised the um final gyoza scene with her so there was some some more acting going on i guess that's especially interesting because isawa is usually not an actress so here they had the chance to improvise some stuff and uh, that ended up in the movie and she, uh, on the other hand she got some like one-to-one -one training from mr sonomura to improve her action skills and uh, if you compare this to the first movie one thing is very obvious in the first one. I didn't mention that in, in the last video. I forgot that um, when she does action, there's a lot of like what I call speed ramping. Like they speed up the movie to make her actions look faster and more powerful. And that basically doesn't happen here. Just I, I noticed that in one scene when she gets hit in the face by someone and um, in other parts I, I didn't really notice that so she's a little bit more active she does a little bit by her more by herself and they didn't um, need so much of these uh, tricks to make it look convincing and uh, that's very nice and Miss Isawa said that uh, here the big final fight that obviously needs to come is uh, very much a shonen manga inspired and uh, yeah that's uh, I saw some other stuff that's very manga-esque, but we'll get to that a bit. And um, she said they wanted more like Buster Keaton and Tom and Jerry humor in the action, not just total realism. And there's a very, very, very funny moment in the final fight that I can't spoil now. And uh, yeah, she trained very hard. She did like four hours a day and um, like punch training and every time the punches got more 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 and she uh revealed one secret that um there's a fight with them in mascot costumes she wasn't involved in that that was stunt people and uh hmm. yeah so the two guys didn't say too much in their interviews just that for the final fight there was a lot of pressure to be better than in the first movie and i would say they succeeded it was a very very good uh, fight at the end 
So yeah, basically these are my, my notes. So why do I like this movie and why do I like it so much more than last time? So like I said, the two villains in this movie get basically built up as protagonists. And basically, if we had a different movie, our two real protagonists would be the villains. And um, that's a problem in a sense. I mean, of course, we have a lot, lot of movies with like samurai movies or my, I don't know, John Woo's the killer or whatever, where the two opposing um, people or teams or whatever notice that under different, in a different situation, a different life, uh, if they had met they would be amazing friends, and that's the same here. We realize the two pairs are basically more or less the same, or at least very, very similar. We have the goofy, cute one, we have a little bit more serious uh, fighter, and um, yeah, so they would get along very, very well, but because of the situation that we have here, they must... Uh, fight in the end and uh, yeah like I said how that played out I didn't really like it was a little bit too nasty a little bit too cool I thought and I revised this opinion we will get to that point later but overall as a thing like criticism of the of society and how the world works and how Japanese uh, economy is currently um, it makes a lot of sense to actually do that. I'm surprised that Sakamoto didn't talk about these aspects uh, at all in his interview, so maybe he talks about somewhere else, but I felt like this whole movie is completely based on uh, around uh, economy economic factors and uh, income money, all these things um, like the main point for the villains is that they want to get from part-time job to a full-time job and at the same time the two girls get a lot of debt and um, they have to earn money and they feel the pressure of being poor and uh, there's a lot about uh, or not a lot but some stuff about gambling which is of course a way for let's say poor people to get some extra money or get into more debt. So uh, there are a lot of these things. There's a lot of talk about uh, food prices. Um, uh, Chisato gets a taste of what it's like to be in the position of the girl at the maid cafe in the first movie who remembers all the prices of kombini food and is so shocked if someone is able to actually buy the stuff and they have to buy some food that just regrows uh, so they can eat and eat and eat without having to buy new stuff and so there's a, a lot about poverty and um, how to get your life back together and uh, like I said a bit where we have to say that our uh, heroes uh, are basically really nasty people who work for the really really nasty system to basically get their status back and um, in that sense the ending made a lot of sense for me and it's very nihilistic and not very happy but uh, it's um, yeah I think it's more in line with maybe Sakamoto's earlier movies that were much much darker and much more nihilistic than this even is, but it makes sense that he would come up with something like that. And yeah, I, I would say this understanding that this movie is basically all about money and economy and social status maybe, it works very well and improved the movie experience for me a lot. So yeah, I th I think like I watched it now three times, and my letterbox ratings are 
like of course I had 10 points instead of five what I'm doing here. I went from 4.5 to four and now to five. So I'm still here at a five at a very, very good. And yeah, that's um, interesting how this goes up and down. The same, first I was super, and not first, like last time, I was super annoyed by how the, um, how the characters function in the beginning, like when we first see Chisato and Mahiro. And um, they're just like really, the jokes are not good. It's a typical, oh, I thought you paid. No, I thought you paid. And somehow, I, I don't know, this time it worked much better for me. It wasn't annoying at all. And this attitude was not acting in any way responsible. Um, worked very well in that regard that they never had to care about money because they always had enough and now suddenly they get this huge bill of what was it um uh, da, 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 as, wow three million eight hundred ninety thousand yen I think that was about like twenty five thousand euro or something and um I think that's only their gym membership that they didn't pay and uh, with these debt they have we actually get a little bit inside of how much time passed like the first one must have been shortly after they graduated high school and here it says they had to they have to uh, pay two years uh, worth of insurance after they turned 18 so it must be like one or two years after the first one maybe more like one one and a half that makes sense um yeah and uh, like i said in this sense it makes sense that we see them being completely yeah not caring about money just sitting there eating ice cream like animals um and uh, being unable to pay attention to anything that they have to do to function in life i mean like like we established in the first one, it's totally fine for them to live like that. But even like the basic thing, like paying your bills, uh, suddenly becomes a problem, and yeah, puts them in a position where they have to learn to uh, engage with that. And that's uh, very nice, very good, and it makes overall a lot of sense. And yeah, for me, this movie worked a lot more this time. Yeah, so uh, very, very nice. Um, we have some today too. Um, there's not much insight to get from here. We've got the uh, Kinema Jumpo with uh, reviews and um, they basically all say the same. Um, one says it's a very 90s indie movie like Tarantino with a lot of... Uh, talk and pop culture references and stuff like that and some say there's no story which is uh, i just explained that doesn't it isn't true and uh, yeah no, no, nothing cool like last time like they should all talk in uh, basically rap but uh, i just saw that here a gakuryo ishi's movie um what was it a self revolution revolutionary cinematic struggle I think it's the uh, English title, got three, three and one star, and that's just insane. It's a fantastic movie that should be available and released everywhere, and everybody should watch it because it's amazing. And how can we not talk about this amazing movie? I'm very, very disappointed, Kinema Jumpo. But yeah, this three, three, three for this one, I think it's a little bit too low, so I go five. Um, anyway, so that's very nice so let's uh, deep a little bit uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into the movie and um quite interesting we f from the start we get this um uh we get this gambling thing established like they the two guys have a job to do and they raid this house where a group of gangsters is playing mahjong and um the younger one, I think, Makoto is his name. He asked one of the uh, guys, Hey, uh, how is Mahjong? I don't 
care about Mahjong. I read Kaiji and I uh, didn't like it, so I dropped it when I read the Mahjong part in Kaiji. And uh, yeah, that's a great action scene. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another thing we should maybe talk about before the spoilers. The action is way more. The action is way better distributed throughout the film. So we've got an action scene at the start. We've got one at 27 minutes. We've got one at 52 minutes, one at 50 minutes and one at 80 minutes. And that's uh, very nice and they're all very good. And uh, yeah, so more action spread out throughout the movie. That's one reason why I think it's uh, better than the first one. Or one thing that I think it does better, I'm not sure if it's better than the first one, but it does this better than the first one. And it's more like the structure is cleaner. We talked about the little bit messy, confusing structure of the first one. This one is way, way cleaner. It's very like straight through and there's not much playing around with time and dreams and stuff. Um, it's all pretty clear. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so. We've got this spectacular fight where our uh, heroes, or not heroes, um, get established as the underdogs. They have to fight, they have to fight dirty. It's not very pleasant to see what they have to do. I mean, for me, it's very pleasant, but it looks very nasty what they do there. And soon it is established that they're uh company is basically not very professional they get a little bit wrong orders they get uh, false information they don't get paid properly they don't even get then yakiniku and um, that's really depressing so it makes clear how this um, company they are working for is organized and not very um worker friendly while Mahiro and Chisato basically always get explained in detail like their boss sits there with his little handbook says this is prohibited this is prohibited this is. everything is clear there are a lot of rules to follow but in the same way there's a lot of stuff that's clear and not messed up like in their case so it's a very very different um, work ethic here Funnily enough, I think the two guys would work better in the more organized company, while the two girls would maybe function better in the uh, chaotic um, company. So that's a little bit funny here. But uh, yeah, anyway, so then after after this big introduction, we finally get to the girls. And like I said, they're in big money trouble. We uh, soon get to the first fight scene in a bank, so more money context and how the rules are against them. Like they can't pay their stuff on time because of a bank robbery. And I, I felt a little bit betrayed. The boss of the two boys later says that he was in that bank. And it looks like he's sitting in the circle with all the people who... Um, basically uh what is it called in english hostages um uh, he, later later they pretend that he's there but i i tried to find him i couldn't find him there are other people but i didn't see him sitting there so i i don't know i feel a little betrayed i i like it if you actually have the chance to notice these people beforehand yeah if someone later says hey i was there why, why not before why why don't you at least show him from from behind or something um yeah i was a little yeah that could have been better but anyway so we get established that they are in huge depth and uh, it's really really expensive what they have to pay like it must be the most expensive gym in the world um not to talk about their um uh, insurance so that's all really expensive and they comment on it uh, like especially the insurance like hey you're killers it's really dangerous so of course you have to pay more money for the insurance so just excuses to make stuff a little bit um, more expensive so here we have both teams established one is basically at the top and they fall down and they try to 
get back up to keep their status, but they're not in real trouble. I mean, they have their position safe, and now they're just suspended from working, so for a while they need to do some other work to um, earn some money to survive. So it's no problem. They're not in a real danger. There's no real need to change. And on the other hand, we have these two underdog boys who somehow have a dream to make some money and uh, feel cor courageous. Is that a word? Courageous enough to ask this girl out. Uh, let's see, girl from uh, Carmen Ryder who works in a cheap restaurant where they go to eat uh, and these things. And um, yeah, they just want to get a like life that's um, worth living and that's not like having to think about every lunch and what you want to eat all the time and uh, yeah so that's uh, basically in any other movie this would be the heroes because they actually have a goal they have something to achieve and the other two just yeah they, they don't want to eat garbage for a month or two so they have to do some actual work there's this no Nothing to, to, uh, what is it called? Fallhöhe. What is Fallhöhe in English? I have no idea. We'll write it, uh, in somewhere here. Um, anyway, so, yeah, in the beginning, one thing with the girls that, uh, stylistically, um, came to mind is when they have the interactions in their apartment. It's, the comedy aspect is much more manga or anime-esque, like they have um, strange little pauses where they keep strange poses and just to have a big reaction after that, that felt a lot like a anime and um, yeah, weird little looks and these things. So there was, was one thing there. Um, yeah, and then we have this continued motive of money and gambling. So, for example, yeah, like they, they get um, lectured about their contracts over and over again, and um, they talk about the capitalist pyramid uh, when they talk about food. Like both both uh, teams have this food talk where they talk about the like 100 yen levels for lunch they can have so that's a lot of stuff here and here comes into play that um, Chisato actually tries gambling or not, not so much gambling she plays shogi so more like a uh, chess but for her yeah that's one way to escape poverty in an easy manner and this too is like filmed like a great um manga anime comedy scene so that's really really well, one of the funniest scenes in the movie when she tries to play shogi they have this uh, part-time job in between where they wear like mascot costumes and they have to entertain some kids and the owner of the shop that they do that for is this old man who keeps talking to them about this movie um, uh, we made a beautiful bouquet and about a uh, Masaki Suda who is such a sexy boy and he talks a lot about um, the clothing that he wears like there are two two brands named one is uh, what Jack Pirel my picture I, I don't know i can't read my own handwriting anymore and uh maison Magi, magira maybe maison magira maybe something so some some fashion brands i, I don't know shit about fashion and um oh, look at me uh, but but anyway that, that like makes the whole theme of money and not having that um, more present like more talk about brands that they can't afford and in uh, in this movie like i said he 
um, talks about Masaki Suda, who has this relationship in this movie, which basically gets destroyed by working in a company, by being part of the corporate machine, and um, yeah, therefore we get this topic again. And it's so funny that these two, on the one hand, they don't get what it's all about, they just sit there and feel like, oh my god, having a relationship sounds really, really hard, and somehow, as a joke, they start um, reciting this scene from the movie where he asks his girlfriend to marry him in a, the most unromantic manner, but this too is just based on um, she doesn't like capitalist work companies, she wants to have a job that's um, enjoyable and fun for her even though uh, even if she uh, earns less money and he's like oh yeah, yeah if we get married i will just make the money and you can do whatever you want but that's not the point that's not what the girl wants so um yeah so they start to recite this very unromantic scene which somehow looks like or makes them look like and makes them a little bit feel like they have a little relationship going on, which is really, really funny. Um, and they, from this point on, they struggle like a real couple. Now, especially Mahiro and Chisato with her uh, new um, discovered gambling habit um, gets in a lot of trouble with Mahiro, who wants to stop her from this and always complains and then says, oh, here, I checked your browser history and you looked at videos of... Uh, how to play shogi and this stuff. So, um, this is all a package uh, with economy and money and living together and having some kind of relationship, even though here it's obviously not romantic. But when Maido yells at her, like, ah, marry me, um, she's like, oh, did you just propose to me? And uh, for a moment, she maybe things like oh did she really do that and it's really funny and cute and very nice and it's it makes sense that they don't understand what this movie is about and uh, yeah like the director said some people might feel about this movie in the same way so that's very good we have to finally get to the point where the two teams um, meet each other and the first time they meet basically Mahiro and Chisato knock them out and uh, very interesting uh, Mahiro complains that they're weak and she needs some stronger enemies which sounds exactly like the uh, Yakuza henchman in the first movie so basically yeah more similarities more uh, uh, Easter eggs I don't know um, references references yeah it's a reference that's the word um, yeah, to the first movie, so very nice, and, um, yeah, like, like I said, here the, uh, disposal was the word I was looking for, the, uh, dead body disposal dude, um, gets hurt in this whole scenario, and here it's very funny, like, another relationship, he and his, um, co-worker, the nice little girl, um, yeah, he uh, seems to be cool and yeah, all toned down, but she gets really, really angry. She wants these uh, those bastards to die and uh, yeah, demands revenge. And this is a very funny thing when she complains to him, why aren't you angry? You should be angry. You should complain and you should want these guys dead too. And then he really gets angry, and it's uh, hilarious when this uh, fancy little boy suddenly becomes a bloodthirsty monster that he might actually be, we don't know. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a hilarious, it's a lovely scene. And yeah, basically this is what, what shows, like, you fight the big company, you, uh, no? And... Yeah, you can see that, uh, you can compare that to, to any kind of business. You uh, fight the big company with your little company and uh, well, same situation. 
And yeah, here, so they uh, finally find them. We have a big spectacular fight. And in this fight, of course, it's obvious that the two boys need to lose in the end. But they have the most wonderful idea how to fake their uh, win with another dream sequence. It's uh, wonderful. Like the guy lands a hit and suddenly there's a chance to win against uh, Mahiro and he does so and when he wants to walk away to his injured brother he just crashes into a invisible wall that turns out to be the floor that he's getting like uh, whacked in with his face first and uh, he gets back into the fight and uh, it's a wonder wonderful scene um, the whole fight is absolutely spectacular and wonderful and yeah like like uh so these are said in the interviews i tried to make it a little bit more funny i i don't know if that's what she meant but there's a lot of funny posing interesting uh, body language going on i i think it looks very weird like the first one was even dirtier and grittier but this one has a little little funnier weirder aesthetic to it i can't really put it in words but it's uh, extremely spectacular and extremely good and what really annoyed me when i watched it last time is this um after everything is over it's clear who the winners and the losers are and they share a wonderful moment eating cat food and talking and realizing hey we could have been best friends under other circumstances and yeah suddenly the phone rings and they get reminded hey we have to kill these guys and they do so and i felt like last time there's this tarantino-esque shot from below that makes the two girls look super cool and i felt like these two boys were build up as these underdog hero characters who would have been the heroes in any other movie just here under these circumstances they can't be the heroes and i felt like they deserve a little bit more compassion so i felt like just show it in a total don't show the girls looking down on them at them and shoot them um, made more sense to me at least you don't need to show them actually having compassion like they did in the uh, second episode of everyday there's a scene that i felt like should be like that and this time i know it's actually okay they did it in this way because first it's not just they're looking down they're looking down then they look at each other like they communicate okay we have to do that we can't just walk away because uh, of course i just had a phone call that's basically reminded them hey we have to stop this nice being together and so we have to get back to reality we have to get back to business and we have to uh, make these heads explode and um yeah uh i think in that sense it works it works very well in the cynical nihilistic way of hey these two boys had a dream they wanted a nice normal life nothing else just a very basic dream just a normal full-time job with nice income and the opportunity to have a date with a beautiful woman and um yeah like reality uh you just get stomped by the machine and uh, which makes the girl still look pretty nasty because they are part of the big machine but you can't really blame them because yeah that's their job they have to do it and um there's no discussion so yeah i i somehow felt like yeah okay it makes sense i'm still sad for the boys i would have loved to see more of them i would have loved to have the idea so maybe somewhere they can have a nicer life but now they have to die i mean it was obvious from the start like in every other movie especially like samurai movies you have so many samurai movies and that's the one important theme and the wonderful it's a summer film like you have two 
two dudes who have to fight until they die and it's important for their personality and it's important for the story so it makes total sense that they have to die i just felt like give them a little bit more uh, empathy have a little bit more feeling for them but yeah in this corporate sense i feel like it makes a lot of sense that they get killed in a very cruel manner so yeah i somehow came to the conclusion that this is all totally fine and works well and it's a great movie and one more thing that i've almost forgot again both movies have songs by the wonderful singer kyono and uh, you should check his solo stuff but what i like even more is his old band the mad capsule markets so I'll listen to some good uh electronic um punk rock and uh i guess that's all i have to say and we're almost as long as last time so let's finish this quickly thank you very much for watching uh, please come back and uh we will talk about more baby assassins and some other stuff we will finish the yugo sakamoto filmography with some very gory interesting titles that are not as good as this one but uh still very nice so uh, have a nice day i will have nice days soon looks like i can watch it on friday so expect the next video at the weekend until then i'm too busy with normal work anyway so too bad Thank you. See you. Bye.